Uncivilized Vitality, and this is the packing list for the emergency camp. Okay, so emergency camp is going to be a little overnight, uh, 24 or 48 hours, I'm not sure uh, yet, depends on the season we do it, where we're going to work uh, outdoors with our field craft skills with just our first line of uh, preparedness or pacing, which is our pockets and pouch. So generally that means carrying the eight tools uh, on your person in your pockets or uh, because for whatever reason the women's clothing for outdoors doesn't seem to have a lot of pockets, they just have little, little fake pockets, uh, a pouch. Just a small fanny pack or, or a purse. This is my uh, SOE FUPA, which I'm going to do a video on pretty soon to review. Um, I like it. And this will be allowed on the emergency camp. And uh, you'll see the other packing. So let's go through the things you're going to need. The primary tool, uh, clothing and covering. We're going to talk about that in a bit and some options. The second tool set is going to be cutting and digging. You're going to rely a lot on your knife and your digging. So what we're going to do is skip taking a trowel or a shovel because you wouldn't carry that in your pocket necessarily. You're going to have to fashion a digging stick, and we'll talk about that when we're out. But as far as cutting, on the emergency camp, you will only be allowed two knives. You will be allowed a small knife that's uh, no more, a blade of no more than three inches. So I got a little, lot of different um, examples here. We've got a White River Bushcraft. Um, this is their Backpacker, Backpacker Pro. We've got an LT Wright little knife that goes in this leather pouch. You've got this little Mora Eldris, right? So a knife about that size. And um, here's a little Izula from Essie. You could go even smaller and run the Candy Roo from Essie. That's a nice little knife, right? A small fixed blade, the Foltz Minimalist, right? Uh, CRKTP, little minimalist. That's a great knife because it'll fit in a the pocket. Then I've just got another um, MSK Survival, the little mini Trekker from uh, Tops. So any variety of these small knives, you need to have a small knife on you. And then you can have a second knife. Now, your second knife can be, there's a couple spider Spydercos. Here's a Delica, right? Um, here's a small Dragonfly. So, uh, a folding knife is a good secondary knife. I'm going to suggest, especially on the emergency camp, you make your secondary folder your Leatherman Signal or other, uh, other multi-tool because then you get kind of a, a two-for-one having that. Plus, you want something that's going to be brightly colored. This Delica in the, the low-vis gray is the opposite of what you want for emergency camp. My Signal is of the low-vis gray, but I have these little uh, inserts I can change out for high-vis colors so at least I can see it. And if I did carry a folder as my secondary, I would make sure that it's uh, brightly colored. All right, so two knives. The next thing you're gonna be allowed, um, the, they have to be under three inches, and then the, the secondary one can be a folder, but it should also be small or a multi-tool. Uh, now your fire starting, fire and light elements. We're going to have um, headlamps or flashlights with us in the group bag, which would, I should mention now will be the, the water filter, um, the trauma kits, the, the boo-boo box, the emergency blankets, the emergency ponchos, that will all be in a backpack probably with our uh, photographer or support staff, somebody that's with us carrying that stuff in case an emergency um, of life-threatening proportion breaks out. There's no sense uh, risking your life just to learn how to do this. So uh, we will have uh, the headlamps, we just won't be using them at night. So we'll have to, well, we'll learn about that in the class. But for packing, as far as fire and light go, you're going to be allowed one small ferro rod. So, no lighters. You won't be able to take your pocket lighter. You will be able to take a ferro rod, but not some big, uh, like this Baylight Hefty Boy here. Okay, that's too big. Even this, kind of your standard, comes with your, uh, your knife. You carry this usually on your belt knife or your Boy Scout model. It's going to be too big. Okay. You can get them smaller. You're going to be allowed a ferro rod <laughs> of less than two inches. So if you want to cut down one of the bigger ones, that ferro rod, less than two inches, you'd be allowed a ferro rod. You're also going to be required to have on your person an emergency whistle. I have this little setup with a, from Wazoo Survival Gear, a little ferro rod, a ceramic striker, and a little whistle right in one little pouch. Or you can get 
uh, a survival whistle and just put that in your pocket or hang it on you. All right. So cutting and digging will be limited just to two knives, one teeny tiny little ferro rod. And then as far as your containers go, you will be allowed one container. So one water bottle, no more than um, 40 ounces. Okay. So don't bring the big 64 ounce growler or a gallon size uh, Yeti or something silly trying to skirt the rules. Just bring one water bottle, water bottle container. Make sure that it is a single walled stainless steel standard because it's going to have to go in the fire to purify your water. Okay. Now with that container, this year, uh, just like emergency camps evolve each year, we used to go barefoot and just shorts and then it became co-eds. We allowed uh, shirts and um, and then another layer and then shoes because of a couple of uh, um, injuries and such. Uh, little thorns in the feet that kind of took the damper on the rest of emergency camp. So one of the concessions we're making from now on is in addition to your, can your container, you will be able to pack in a life straw. Get a magic marker, not a magic marker, permanent marker. Get a permanent marker, write your name on there, on your life straw. It's got this little string. You'll be able to take a life straw in addition to your container. So that's going to be that. Um, speaking of which, let's talk about food for a minute. You will be allowed one sandwich size Ziploc bag full of food. Um, I ate this one on the way to the park with my wife today. Try to make an example because I got, I got snacky. But you'll be allowed one Ziploc bag, quart size bag. You can pack it full of as much stuff as you want. I just had some nuts in this. Usually I'll do is uh, stuff it full of uh, nuts, jerky, and then I'll squeeze some ghee in there kind of grease the whole mess up to get some fat. And then I'll slip a few of these little little packages of honey in there just for a little morale booster. So you'll need to take some, or you'll be allowed to take some food with you and encouraged to do that. Now, as far as um, your cordage goes, you will be allowed to bring, or required to bring, I should say, your fast rope, okay? So you're gonna need a fast rope. This is the six to eight millimeter uh, Paramax. You need a 12 foot hank for your fast rope. I would suggest, usually I carry a gray one around uh, to practice my knots and have. I would suggest something uh, brighter colored, like I usually just bring my yellow one because I can see it stand out. So you'll be allowed one fast rope. If you don't have one, uh, for instance, this is the training tool we use for the Uncivilized Vitality uh, outings. When we take groups out, they get one uh, climbing rated carabiner, locking carabiner, and a really, really high-vis uh, chunk of fast rope to practice knots on and uh, some different harnesses. You'll also be allowed or required to bring a carabiner with your fast rope. Okay. I'll go over this list uh, below, but so far we've got uh, a knife less than three inches and a backup knife that can be a folder also under three inches. Multi-tool is suggested. You'll need one ferro rod that's less than two inches. Um, no tinder. You're not allowed a secondary fire source or a striker. You're required to have a whistle. You're going to need a sandwich size quart bag of food. You're going to need a, stain, a stainless steel container, no greater than 40 ounces, and a life straw. And you can pick these up all sorts of places. Now on to cordage. You'll need a fast rope, one fast rope. You're also going to need 24 feet of paracord. You're going to need a 12 foot section of paracord, a six foot section of paracord, and two three foot sections of paracord that have been de that have been gutted and tied into a loop. All right, so I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about. So here would be, I've just got this one linked up in a chain, a chain sinnet. There's my 12 feet of paracord, and here's one of my loops. I've got another loop somewhere in a pocket. Yeah, yeah it'll show up. It's in one of my pockets. There we go. There's another loop. And then I'd have one more six foot piece of paracord. That one's probably gonna be used to make your bed roll, but you'll have 24 feet of paracord on you and a 12 foot piece of fast rope. All right, so that'll be your cordage. You're gonna want something to um, clean yourself with. Just grab a little package of dude wipes or one of the small single serving uh, dude wipes, couple of those. These are gonna be great for um, cleaning your hands uh, before we eat cleaning yourself up after you use the, uh, after you defecate or urinate out in the bush. So a package of dude wipes or another uh, secondary Ziploc bag with some baby wipes folded up in it. You could bring dry uh, toilet paper as well, but seeing as how it usually rains or gets damp at emergency camp, you're gonna probably want something like this. 
All right, so um, moving on. Most of that stuff that I just mentioned, I can carry all of that on my person or in my pouch. So let's go. I'll show you some of that. So I'm ready for emergency camp right now, except for a couple other elements. I can put the dude wipes in my pocket, but I usually walk around all right, in my pocket, or if I didn't have pockets, I'm wearing shorts or my pants without pockets. I'd put these things in my, uh, my pouch, my Hill People gear or that SOE bag. I've got my cordage and my fast rope stuffed in a pocket. Seem to have my reading glasses there. Don't worry about those. Uh, in this pocket, I have my multi-tool and uh, some money. And in this back pocket, I usually have a couple of bandanas, right? I usually carry a cotton one, a bright color that I use for everything and a silk one. We'll talk about those in a minute. And then I have around my neck, I have a whistle and a ferro rod and a striker, also from Wazoo Survival Gear, so I can choose to wear that around my neck. Oops, sorry about the microphone. Um, but also in my wallet, and let me turn this around. Right. And in my wallet, I have a flashlight. I have a flashlight, I keep that attached to my, my wallet in my pocket, but we won't be allowed to use your flashlight, but we'll have them in case we need them. And in my wallet, I keep a couple of things in here. I keep a single dude wipe uh, folded up in my wallet. So I have that on my person. I keep a tiny pen and a little write in the rain notebook. So I have ways to leave messages and uh, get hold of people. I have, as a bit of redundancy, another little ferro rod and striker in my wallet. Uh, I also keep some tinder in my wallet in the form of this Wazoo Survival Fire Card. Okay. This thing actually works great. Slips in my wallet along with that little ferro rod. I've always got some tinder available. I won't be using that on the, on the trip, on the emergency camp, because we're going to have to find ways to uh, be prepared without tinder. A little right in the rain pen. All right. And some earplugs. So those are what's in my wallet. I have most of that stuff we talked about earlier already on my person and ready to go. I would have my container, food, and or life straw uh, next, or maybe in my pouch. The last bit and the main bit for the emergency camp is gonna be your clothing element. So you're gonna to wanna to dress in layers. I am probably just gonna wear shorts. I like to wear shorts. Uh, that way I can glance down throughout the day and check if the ticks are working their way up on my leg. Um, from the knees down, my legs dry quicker. Uh, if you're worried about the, the bushwhacking with the thorns and the, the things like that, uh, first, harden up a little bit. A couple scratches won't kill you. Test your durability. Secondly, um, it's easier, it reminds you to not just bowl through the forest, but maybe to pick your trail a little more carefully if your legs are uh, exposed. And I would suggest not a big pair of boots, but just a pair of tennis shoes or something comfortable. Maybe not sandals for emergency camp, uh, just to kind of protect your feet a little bit, but there it is. Okay, now the clothing. Dress in layers. Maybe a long sleeve with a button that you can take on and off, um, or a, a long sleeve sort of pullover like this I'll wear under my UV uniform shirt so I can dress in layers. The main piece of gear I can't emphasize enough is some sort of cover or lid, a hat. This will keep the sun off me during the day, but it might not keep me the warmest at night. So you are also able to take, instead of this hat, you could take, this is my other favorite for half the year, just a regular watch cap, just a stretchy wool cap. This will keep the sun off me during the day and keep me warm uh, at night. But for emergency camp, you're gonna have to choose, all right? You're gonna have to pick which hat you're wearing through the day. This one comes in handy for lots of things. Now, um, you're gonna be allowed or required to bring a few other pieces of kit. You can take and should take one buff. Okay, which is just a little tubular, uh, tubular shaped uh, morigami. This one's by Buff, or nope, minus 33, made of uh, wool and it stretches. I can use this at night uh, for a hat. So I could put this on to keep my head warm. I could pull this down during the day to keep my neck warm. I can keep it out of the way uh, around my wrist or just use it to wipe sweat from my face. Lots of different uses for a Buff. So I'd suggest you bring one. And you could use that for your hat at night. 
You should also have at least one cotton handkerchief and one larger um, piece of cloth morigami. This is a large silk, right? This is a large silk wild rag, right? Endless uses of these things. You can wrap them around your neck. You can use them as an extra belt. We'll go into usage of this material at emergency camp, but this fits right in my back pocket usually uh, with my handkerchief. So you're going to be allowed a small piece of uh, two small pieces so you can bring a buff and or a couple of handkerchiefs, one cotton, one silk, one hat. You're going to be allowed or required to bring a morigami of the towel, that's a Turkish towel, or a shamog size. So you're going to need a piece of cotton that's either the towel size or a shamog size, right? So you get to choose one of those. You're going to need to bring some sort of garbage bag, either just a regular see-through uh, lawn and leaf bag, which is not very big, or a 55-gallon drum liner, okay? So you're going to need a garbage bag. You're going to want to bring some sort of hood, right? This is the same as the smaller buff, right? But a multi-use hood, a lava lava sarong, uh, the multi-hood is just a piece of cloth sewn into a large hoop. You're going to want to bring one of these. You can bring, uh, this one's made of uh, an old cast off piece of my kilt, one of my great kilts. This is a large cotton one. This one's made of a softer, warmer wool. And then we have the Uncivilized Vitality official multi-hood, which is made of a more robust material, ripstop nylon uh, blend, and uh, these have multiple use. You're gonna need a hood because this is gonna be your main bag, right? You're going to need to bring a poncho, a USGI sized a standard poncho. Okay, you'll need that. And then the last bit of gear that you're going to bring is going to be a blanket, a single blanket. You can bring uh, a patu, which is a fairly thin, fairly thin uh, wool blanket. Right? This one's made of uh, yak wool, I believe, just blanket size. So you're gonna need a blanket. You can bring your patu, depending on the time of season, I might bring my patu. You can bring just a military surplus uh, wool blanket. Okay, these are great. Uh, or what I've been opting for more and more lately is a more modern version. Uh, this is my Swagman roll. Okay, I like this because uh, not only does it have a zipper and it can zip up into almost a sleeping bag configuration, but I can wear this paired up with my poncho so that if we reach uh, inclement weather, I can actually make a coat instead of just wrapping a wet wool blanket around me, <laughs> which I've done. And there's not much more morale sucking than a wet wool blanket on you for 12 hours in the woods. Unless you're into that, that's fine. So this is what you're going to do. Let's move these two blankets and say I'm taking my swag man. Okay. So I'll take my swag man and I would make sure that it is uh, folded up or tied up. Another thing to recommend a Swagman roll for an emergency camp or just a simple day outing is that it packs into its own little pocket. So I'm just going to shove this down in here instead of tying up a bedroll out of my blanket right now. So everything for my emergency camp is on my person except for a couple things. I will take my Swagman my poncho, my garbage bag, and my towel. And these things are going to go right here inside my hood. Okay. Just going to lay them on that hood. Okay. I can throw my fast rope in there and my container. Okay. My life straw, my wipes, my food and my buff, these things will probably just go in my pouch or in my pockets. Okay. Once those elements are laid up in my hood, I'm going to take that hood and just twist 
and twist and twist until I've made a nice little package for easy carrying. And then I'm ready for my uncivilized emergency camp. I've got everything in my pockets or and or my pouch. I've got my knives. I've got my small less than three inch knife on my belt or or around my neck. I can use one of my I could use one of my little loops of cordage. I could slip that through there so my knife is more uh, readily accessible. Just flip that through there. Then I could just throw that around my neck with my little ferro rod. Uh, I probably won't wear the neck ferro rod. I've got one in my wallet. I've got my multi-tool in my pocket. I've got some cordage. I've got that bandana or my buff in my pocket for around my neck. Uh, for when it gets cold and we'll be hiking around and we get to camp we will set up shelter with our tarps or with our ponchos I mean our blankets and our multi hoods and we will do uh, several different teaching exercises out in the woods how to make do with this minimal amount of gear so uh, if, if you're going out into the woods for any reason this stuff plus a boo-boo kit or a trauma bag would be the bare minimum of gear you take typically in a, in a backpack like i like to run my hill people gear tarahumara or umlindi size and instead of bundling this stuff up in here i just throw it in the backpack and then i've got more room the problem is uh what happens is as you get a backpack and then uh, a chest rig and then a bigger backpack and you just start putting more gear in the more pockets the more shit you, uh, stuff you find to put in there so Going on emergency camp and limiting ourselves to just a few things in our pockets, we really get to learn with the minimal amount of gear, uh, the multiple uses you can do with that. Your main gear is going to be this clothing because the weather's unpredictable. Need your hat, need your blanket, need your poncho, need a way to carry it. And then a few miscellaneous pieces of cloth, a silk bandana, handkerchief, a buff. Those will make all the differences uh, later when it gets cold at night. Small knife as a tool, a container as a tool, that food and life straw as backups. Uh, the trauma kit for the group will be with the uh, um, support staff. And then just some cordage and knives in your pocket and you're ready to go. Uh, other things like toiletries, you got your dude wipes, um, contact lenses, um, medications, personal meds, uh, eyeglasses, right, that sort of thing, uh, toothbrush, and those things can also go in a small bag and they'll stay uh, with the support staff um, or unless you want to put your toothbrush in your pocket and carry one a small traveling toothbrush that's fine if not brush your teeth the morning we start brush your teeth the next morning uh, when we get back to the car and you'll be fine so this is to simulate what would happen in an emergency if i went out under prepared or less prepared and i ran into an emergency and or is to teach you to always be prepared so these emergencies creep up you don't have to slip over into a survival mode which is really just curling up around a tree and not dying until the next day or until you're found so that is it um, there'll be a lot more teaching on the event but that'll be your packing list I'll describe that more in the uh, comments down below in case you don't want to uh, make notes as we go but that's it like share subscribe what else comment what's in your emergency kit and uh, I think that's it.